My name is Sharish Sathe, and I'm with uh, a partner at a firm called Kosla Ventures. And I have Nick Koshnik, who is the CEO of one of our portfolio companies here. Uh, originally, when we were preparing for this talk, I was going to have about 50 PowerPoint slides. And I was going to take you through each one of them very carefully. But then I figured it's you know 5 o'clock in the evening, and you've seen PowerPoint slides all day. So we're just going to do away with the slides and just tell you our story, if that's OK. Uh, so Khosla Ventures is a, uh, a large venture capital firm. And we have about $2.5 billion under management. And we invest across a whole bunch of different areas, including clean technology, computers, networking, uh, consumer internet, um, biofuels, um, solar, uh, smart grid, all of the different technology areas that you might expect except we don't invest in drug discovery and some parts of healthcare. One area that is of particular focus for us is agriculture, which is an area that has been largely ignored by venture capitalists on Sand Hill Road. It's not that there has not been innovation in the field of agriculture. There's been a lot of innovation over the years, obviously. But a lot of that innovation has come from large companies, and call them medium-sized companies. There have been relatively fewer young companies that have developed significantly interesting new products and new technologies, which is very different from almost any other area of industry, where a lot of the innovation comes from the really small companies. And so we thought that uh, agriculture is an area where we should focus on mostly because we are contrarians. And we started seeing people such as Nick, who are one of the best technologists coming out of Stanford University. He'll give you his background. He could have done almost anything. But when people like him start thinking about agriculture companies, we get very interested. Um, in that sense, we are laggards. The entrepreneurs are the leaders, and we sort of follow them closely. Um, so I'll give you a flavor of a few of the companies that we have invested in, and then I'll turn it over to Nick, who's going to tell you a lot more about one particular company called Solum. Um, so we have invested in the field of agriculture in a company that sells climate insurance to farmers. Uh, it basically tells farmers that using a lot of uh, weather data and analyzing the data, it sells uh, insurance to farmers where they say, you, you, the weather on your, right on your field in the next growing season is going to be specified in this way. And if it falls outside these parameters, the farmer gets a payout. The farmer pays a premium. And so obviously, it's not an insurance company in the sense that they don't verify because the, uh, the weather is well known. I mean, there's no, it's not, it's not, it doesn't matter what yield the farmer gets. All that matters is what's the weather. So that's one company. We have another company that actually is represented here called Blue River Technology that uses robotics and computer vision to, to thin lettuce and to replace labor in the field. And not only does it reduce the cost of agriculture, but it dramatically improves the yield. And you'll hear more about it from the uh, founders of that company later today. And certainly we have Solum that has recognized, and Nick will talk a lot more, but I'll just say a few words. Solum recognized that the largest variable cost for the farmer is nutrients. If you put too much nutrients in the soil, it causes uh, runoff in the groundwater, but also doesn't really help the yield. And too little nutrients, obviously, doesn't impact the yield. So if you can figure out an optimal way, an optimal amount of nutrient to put in the soil every season, then you'll get the best yield for the best economic benefit. And that's what Solum does. And Nick will talk a lot more about how it does it. We have other companies in the area also where we have a company that is coming up with innovative ways to make meat from vegetable products, to make cheese from vegetable products, and to make egg substitutes from vegetable products. And the distinguishing thing about these companies although there are a lot of garden burgers and so forth, and fake cheese and so on in the grocery stores, 
the distinguishing thing about these companies is that they're not trying to make these products healthier. That's not the goal. The goal is to make them taste as, as great as the other products, as the original products that we are all familiar with. So it's all about taste, texture, ability to cook them, in the case of meat, but from uh, plant sources. And so we are investing in all of these areas, but I think our, we have a couple of underlying themes that these areas speak to. The one big underlying theme is that we think that one of the biggest innovations left in agriculture is the application of big data and data science to the field of agriculture. So a few of our companies focus on that. Some of our companies use the, our thesis that using computer vision and robotics is the next advance in, in agriculture. And we have a couple of companies that focus on that area. So I think uh, what we want to do, and there are other venture capitalists also doing it now, we want to foster innovation by having young companies focus on agriculture and restart the cycle of innovation starting from smaller companies focusing on one or two of the thematic ideas that we talked about. With that, let me turn it over to Nick and he'll talk to you a little more about Solom. Thank you. So uh, I, I've talked to a bunch of venture capitalists and I, I can always count on saying something like, and now for something completely different. Um, I'm, uh, my name is Nick Koshnick. I'm one of the three founders of Solem. I got a PhD in applied physics from Stanford, and Stanford, of course, has this, this entrepreneurial energy everywhere. Uh, and before that, uh, I uh, went to school on the East Coast, and I, but I grew up in, in rural Minnesota. I grew up in a, a town of about 7,000 people. It's, uh, it turns out one of the other co-founders grew up 35 miles from me, and he had to come to my town because we had a, a movie theater with two screens, and eventually we got Walmart. Um, yeah, and my great-great-grandparents on both sides, or on two of the sides, homesteaded within five miles of that place. Um, when we were getting close to our, our finishing our PhDs, I was trained in uh, mesoscopic superconductivity, which is, uh, it was applied physics, but that's a misnomer. Um, I, uh, the other guys were trained in optics, uh, in the sem we all spent time in the semi semiconductor fabs. We learned a me broad set of measurement skills. Uh, and uh, we were talking about uh, what, we're, what we're interested in, you know, that's, uh, we, we knew we probably wouldn't be professors or weren't interested in. And uh, actually there's another person in our group that said, um, you know, I know this, this farmer that applies fertilizer, it's a blueberry farmer every couple weeks, nitrogen, top dressing, he doesn't really know if he needs to apply it or not. He's, an, he, uh, he's got some organic land, he's environmentally conscious, concerned about applying too much, but also this is in 2007 when the prices were extremely high, but $11 billion is spent on nitrogen in the US. Uh, and we thought about that and thought, you know, that's not um, a very informed system. And as we looked into it more, what we realized, you know, I grew up in an agriculture community, not a farmer, but, uh, this whole agriculture system is being transformed uh, by technology. So what are the, the broad macrodynamics? We have a, a tripling of crop prices, of course, with the drought, but even before that. We have uh, you know, input crop prices, land prices increasing, uh, and you know, the UN says we need to double food production by 2050, and Cherry's Hell and Market saying the same thing. At the same time, you have uh, Combines that are like cockpits of airplanes. They've got a GPS monitor. The, the farmers, and we're working with some really big ones now, sit there not touching the thing, thinking about what their plan is. Uh, they're working out their, you know, their operations guys, and they're seeing the, the yield come in on that combine varying hugely from the top of the hill to the, to the null, or maybe there was an old cattle yard here and that's a high fertility area. There's huge variations, variations of 100 to 250 bushels per acre across any, any field. And these guys are operating a lot of land that they're renting, uh, right? Their, their, their operators not necessarily didn't grow up on that, they didn't homestead it years ago. Uh, so you got these, these cockpit combines. And in addition to that, you know, I was talking to a group of big farmers recently and every one of them's got an iPad. 
Uh, everyone, it, all their farms are actually, in, in the, at least in the Corn Belt, they've all got GPS connections. Uh, that same information technology that's hitting the rest of the world so big is hitting them. And I, it, maybe it's a little bit delayed, uh, but they've got a lot of uh, economics at stake. So go back to that, that initial, uh, that, that sort of founding point. Um, these guys are putting billions of dollars of fertilizer and they don't know. We realized that we could create better measurements to, to help inform that, where there's a real need for information in the system. So uh, it, I'll say just a real quick story of, of where our, our company is, where our technology is. Um, we have some measurement technology, and the, we build technology to create, create data, and then there's data management. So it, it ends up coming back to, to big data. Uh, we built a tool that uses uh, UV spectroscopy, UV light, um, we, uh, farmers say, there is a laser in there. Uh, it, it, just, it just does a simple thing is it tells you how much nitrogen is in, uh, is in the soil and that's something you have to measure in season to respond to. Uh, and now they can go, they, we have some trailers out there. Uh, we sell these to consultants that uh, bring these to each farm. Uh, they get that answer and then they, they can respond if it's a drought or if it's a rainy year and the rainy years, the, the stuff uh, runs off. Um, it, we extended that. Uh, that's pretty much what we did with our initial, our, our seed or Series A, $2 million. Uh, we extended that to build a multi-nutrient platform, which measures this wide set of nutrients. And this is moving towards big data. Um, it's a multivariable problem. You can imagine if you have soil, if you have piece, some land that has a uh, very low pH, if it's this acidic soil, uh, you, you might have low nitrogen, but man, if it's acidic, the, the crop roots can't, can't be uh, active like they should, so you should address the pH problem first. Uh, similar, if there's no topsoil, uh, it doesn't matter if it has nitrogen or not. Uh, and so we have this high throughput multi-nutrient platform, and what we've done there is, um, we, we like to say we've got a foot in Silicon Valley and a foot in uh, agriculture in, you know, in the Midwest or in, in agriculture small communities. Uh, we've le leveraged uh, the land-grant universities, whether it's Davis or uh, University of Illinois, have put a bunch of research into agriculture, and that's completely petered off. Uh, those departments, like there's almost no soil fertility professors left. But all of that technology that they thought about, it never got picked up because it didn't have the information technology landscape to support it. And so we've gone in there and we've taken what is a research standard, which is known as better way to predict, for instance, potassium, made that commercially feasible, uh, and then we can go sell that to uh, the, the service providers in the industry. Similarly, the way they measure texture right now, that's uh, the sandiness or the clay of the soil, they take, they take soil, they put it into a tube and shake it, and they watch how long it settles for four hours. Um, you can take a laser and shine it in there, and if it reflects, small particles kind of reflect more than big particles, and so just in a big a snapshot, almost like taking a picture, you can see that same distribution. So we're trying to work on technologies like that. Um, and we're trying, we're coupling, our business model is to give this to the, not to the farmers, but to the agronomists, the people that are providing agronomy information or decisions to all the farmers. It makes them better, it makes them better at what they do. They can offer something that's differentiated and they charge per acre fees and we can charge per acre fees every year based on that data. So the, the final part, is, uh, uh, perfect, um, is uh, the big data component. Uh, and our most recent, uh, our S Series B was from Andreessen and, uh, and Horowitz, which is kind of a software company, uh, not a clean tech, uh, like, uh, like Coastal Ventures. And uh, that's a great pair, we're really proud of it. Um, when we, I mentioned these cockpit controllers in, in combines or in tractors, uh, they've, got, they've got all this information and they're increasingly coupled to iPads or, or iPhones. Um, what they do and are already doing with the soil measurements, uh, which, is a, which is a great cottage industry right now, uh, is they take that soil information and make a GPS map with it, and then they can, can program their fertilizer spreader to apply more uh, in some places. Let's say if you have low phosphorus, put, put the new phosphorus there, and if you have high phosphorus, maybe cut it off or just put a little replacement amount. Um, so they're all set up. They're all set up for that. Um, 
And similarly, the, all the new planters off, out of John Deere or wherever are, can plant more seeds here or less seeds there, depending on where you think you're, you know, where that, all that money you're paying to Monsanto is, is uh, useful. Um, what we can do is make that easier to get them that information so they can download it directly from their phone into their, their combine rather than downloading it to some Windows 95 software. Or, um, there's actually some good software and there's, there's obviously some, a wide variety. Um, and uh, so we can make it easier and partner with other couple companies to make it easier. Uh, but we can also eventually make rate files that they download that test their assumptions. So uh, if you've got the, the I, uh, Indiana, Michigan, and Ohio have what's called the tri-state recommendations. If you have this much phosphorus, apply this much for a three-state area. I don't know if anyone's from the Midwest, but there's parts of Indiana that are a lot different from other parts of Indiana, let alone, you know, those parts of Ohio where they don't grow anything other than trees. Um, and so that the tri-state area, when were the tri-state recommendations made? Um, actually, I know, I know that Indiana, the Illinois recommendations were made in about 1952, and the professors that are there can't remember the people who made them. Uh, it's, you know, you've, you've lost almost two generations. So it, in, a, in a time when uh, yields have, have tripled or doubled since that time, at least, well, maybe tripled, uh, every input price has increased. Do you think it's time to test that assumption? Yes, is there fun, federal money? Maybe not. But on your farm, there's a high yielding and low yielding area. Maybe in that higher area, let's test a little higher phosphorus. Let's test a little lower uh, nitrogen just in a small block, half acre block, and then share those yield files with us and learn every year from your farm. Uh, and that goes whether it's nutrients, which is obviously our primary play, which is the biggest cost, uh, but also the density of seed, the type of herbicide, et cetera. Um, John O'Farrell, our partner from Andreessen, wrote a little blog post where he said, you know, it's a, it's a virtuous cycle where it's gonna be a, a smarter and better world. So that's, that's uh, we're starting with this thing that is as old as old can be, soil test, well, it's not as old as old can be, but it is just totally the base of all these agronomy decisions here or in Indonesia or in Brazil. Uh, any old agronomist will agree. Uh, and then we're building this information platform on top of it. It's a little story about us. <laughs>